Yes. Yeah, so ABC, so to underline that point, what Hillary Clinton would want, actually, Donnie, her supporters to see, is this ABC poll that shows Trump up six points in five days. Yeah. And this Virginia poll where Trump's still behind, but he's up six points and, and whatever. And, and I, I mean, the, the thing that scared me the most, and we're going to talk to, like, the master of, of, of politics are. in Florida in one second here, but what scared me the most was complacency. Yeah. I didn't mind when people thought I was going to lose because we all fought and we were all hungry. But all of this talk 10 days out, and I know liberal bloggers hate hearing that the <laughs> oh, election's no. not over. I can tell you, Hillary Clinton doesn't want anybody no, to think their people the are very worried. And to the point I made earlier, you yeah. had the best two or three days, the last few days, of basically Trump disappearing, and it was a referendum on Hillary as, as far as the as far right. as WikiLeaks and as far as Obamacare. And these polls move fast, so they are not doing victory laps, nor should they be. Right. All right. With us now, uh, and, and by the way, uh, Clinton warns against complacency. A headline is that in the Times. It's so the Washington Post. It must be true. Or the Washington Post. Post. <laughs> With us now, former two term governor and three term U.S. Senator of Florida. He is such a legend uh, in, in my, my state, home state of Florida. Democrat Bob Graham. He's also the co author of the book, America, the Owner's Manual. You can fight City Hall and win. He's also, I, I remember, it's been 21 years later, he's also the only senator. I, it was amazing. He walked over to the house, I'm in this little office, and sat down and talked to me. Oh, and I was bad. like, welcome to Thank Washington. Thank you for doing that. Well, well, bad well, everybody feels bad for me, but he was doing it because he's <laughs> nice. <laughs> Senator, what a great honor to have you here. Well, Joe, thank you very much for being invited back, and thank you for the chance to talk about this book, which uh, when we started working on a couple of years ago, we didn't anticipate uh, the environment. <laughs> yeah, why not an environment? Wow. Yeah, we need I, it. Yeah. I think a lot of people after this election, whatever the result, are going to ask the question, what in the hell has gone wrong with our country and how can we begin to take it back? And, and what's the answer to well, that? My, I, I think it starts where it began 240 years ago, with the people. Uh, our problem is that uh, we haven't been educating Americans about their rights as citizens in a democracy since the 1970s. So we've got two generations of Americans who don't, don't understand the basic principles of democracy, much less how they as a citizen can use their rights and responsibility to make a real difference. That's what this book gives them a guideline to effective citizenship. People feel so disconnected from Washington, like it's us and them. And they probably need to get a sense of inspiration that they perhaps can get involved in some way. Uh, yes, and I'd also say I think politicians need to learn some of these lessons. Uh -huh. It's amazing to me there were about 20 people ran for president in both parties. It seems as if the one who was the least political, Donald Trump, uh, Trump was the one who had listened to the people and had heard their dissatisfaction, their skepticism, cynicism, anger, and built his campaign around that. Mm -hmm. What? Why weren't the other 19 uh, aware of what was going on? It's what a lot of Republicans are asking right now, Willie. Yeah, well, th in this book, we should point out, this is not like a fluffy memoir. This is a civics book that you could read yes. in a political science class. It's incredible. So what would you tell an ordinary citizen sitting at home who says, I have no say in the process. Everything's decided in Washington. What do you say to them? I'd say you're absolutely wrong. Our government uh, is built around the principle that the people govern, the people make the decision, and the people can lead. Uh, this book is filled with case studies of where Americans from all backgrounds came together and solved a serious problem. Drunk driving uh, in America wasn't solved by government. It was solved by a group of women in Sacramento, California, some of whom had lost a child to a drunk driver, and decided we're going to do more than just grieve. We're going to try to understand why and what can be done about it. And today, drunk driving deaths in the United States are down about 50 percent what they were in the 1980s. Wow. So, Senator, this is a book about utilizing and celebrating democracy. Uh, we have one candidate who two-thirds of his uh, followers think there's a chance the election is rigged. So as somebody who had a very hands-on experience in Florida and who has been, who has run a state as a governor and has been a senator, how do you respond to those people? And because your book is kind of counterintuitive to what they're feeling right now. Well, f first, uh, 
this idea that uh, the presidential election is going to be rigged is from somebody who doesn't understand the process. We have an extremely decentralized electoral process in the United States. The 50 states have first-line responsibility. Generally, they delegate it to a city or a county uh, to actually administer the election. You would have to have tens of thousands of people uh, collaborating in order to have a successful rigged election. Uh, so the people who make that claim, they miss that uh, civic uh, lesson. I mean, I look at our home state. You'd have to have 67 supervisor of elections. Yeah. All, all in on it. It's just, uh, you know, it, it's, it's ironic that we're such a computerized society. What brings me and a lot of people that look at this the most comfort is we haven't computerized yeah. our, our voting process, which sort of teaches us a lesson about something else. It makes it impossible to rig because it's so spread out. Uh, and, it's, and it's very distributed politically. In right. Florida, as you know, Joe, uh, we have elected supervisors of election uh, in 67 counties. Uh, some are Republicans, some are Democrats. That further would make it difficult, I think impossible, uh, to have a rigged election. But again, coming out of this election, uh, whatever happens, we're going to have some real challenges uh, mm -hmm. in this country in reestablishing citizens' confidence in the government and particularly citizens' confidence in right. themselves their ability to make a difference. So and what, one of those supervisors of elections is yes. Judge Stafford's son, oh. David Stafford, oh. in Escambia County. I know you know Judge Stafford? Yes. Yeah. Very well. Well, very yeah. good to have you on. The book is yeah. America, the Owner's Manual. Senator thank Bob you. Graham, thank you so much. Thanks, Up Senator. next, the great David Crosby. Yes. Yeah. Joins us to talk about his new album and the 2016 election. Yeah. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.